friends today we will be discussing about ground water and this presentation is brought by ESS science foundation delhi so first starting with the, the term ground water so the term ground water is usually reserved for subsurface water that occurs beneath the water table in soils and geological formation that are fully saturated that are fully saturated groundwater may be of four type number one conate water or fossil water this is the water which is filled in the interstices or voids of sedimentary rocks means the water found in the voids or interstitial spaces which are empty of the sedimentary rock are called conate water second is juvenile groundwater or also called as new groundwater so this is the water of magmatic or volcanic origin so the water which comes out with magma or volcanic eruption is called juvenile or new groundwater next come is meteoritic water or meteoric water water which comes from rainfall so the water which we are gaining from rainfall is basically called meteoric water the next type of water is rejuvenated water rejuvenated water which results from compaction of loosely packed sediments is called rejuvenated water so these are the types of ground water now as shown in the figure you can see we can divide the various ground water zone okay so these ground water zones as you can see from the picture the upper most is soil water zone followed by immediate wet ooze zone followed by or immediate wet ooze zone is also called as zone of aeration then we have capillary zone then we have phreatic zone or zone of saturation and water table lies below the capillary zone as you can see in the picture and at the bottom most we have a confined bed or impermeable bed above which the zone of saturation is there so now we will be talking about these zones one by one so broadly these ground water zones are divided into two zones the first one is zone of wedos water or unsaturated zone or in this zone all the soil and rock interstices are partly filled with water and partly filled with air so that is called as zone of wedos water or unsaturated zone then we have zone of saturation then we have zone of saturation where in this zone all the soil and rocks interstices are fully filled with water so that zone is called as zone of saturation so you can see the order soil water zone followed by wet ooze zone followed by capillary zone followed by capillary zone and then zone of saturation or phreatic zone if we go from top to bottom zone of unsaturation is also called as zone of aeration or wet ooze zone is constitute soil water zone immediate wet ooze zone and capillary zone zone of unsaturation and saturation are separated by water table zone of saturation and saturation is separated by water table in wet ooze zone in wet ooze zone there are three types of water exist in vertically downward sequence from top to bottom these are soil water zone followed by immediate wet ooze zone you can look in the picture followed by immediate wet ooze zone immediate wet ooze zone is there 
then we have capillary zone capillary zone soil water zone is the component available to plants and hence subjected to transpiration and evaporation so soil water zone is the zone this water is basically available to the plants and they can show transpiration and evaporation from here water below the water table is called as groundwater that all of you know that water below the water table is called as groundwater if we talk in terms of holding which is basically represented by porosity that how much porous a material is and transmitting means permeability capacity of groundwater the host medium or geological formation the host medium or geological formation can be classified into four types so we will be looking at these four types one by one first one is aquifer so this is a very important concept here generally you see ask question from this first is aquifer so aquifer is nothing aquifer is the material which can hold as well as transmit the water under normal hydraulic conditions for example unconsolidated gravel and sandstone so examples are very important here so unconsolidated gravel and sandstone are example of aquifer then next come is aquiclude so as you can see from the name aquiclude which can hold but cannot transmit water so the geological formation which can hold but cannot transmit water is called as aquiclude example is clay examples are very important here then we have aquitard aquitard the material which can hold as well as transmit the water but their permeability or transmissivity but their permeability or transmittivity is not sufficient for production of a well for example sandy clay so in case of aquitard it can hold as well as transmit the water but the permeability or transmissivity is not that well so that we can make a well and the example is sandy clay last but the no, not the least is aquifuge in case of aquifuge it can neither hold nor transmit water the examples are solid granite igneous rocks etc so these are the four types of geological formation now we will be coming to an very important topic which is type of aquifer which they generally ask so we will be going one by one on the type of aquifer also which is very important from examination point of view so if we look at types of aquifer first come is confined aquifer so when we talk about confined aquifer many permeable aquifer typically sandstone are bounded above and below by low permeability beds such as clay means they will be having above and below a uh, aquiclude material such as clay and ground water cannot flow through them means it the water is bound by two side when aquiclude lies both over and under an aquifer they form a confined aquifer so the confined aquifer aquiclude is above and below both the side the impermeable bed above a confined aquifer prevent the rain water from infiltrating directly into the aquifer so as you can see in the picture that in case of confined aquifer we have impermeable strata aquiclude above and impermeable strata aquiclude below right and in between the water trapped is called confined aquifer or the aquifer form is then we have artesian well and recharge area for confined aquifer you can see that the water is coming from side so the recharge area is from the side not directly from the above then we have unconfined aquifer so when you talk about unconfined aquifer in case of unconfined aquifer 
the water travels through beds of more or less uniform permeability that extends to surface in both discharge and recharge area here water table is not bound by any impermeable material above it so it will not be having something above but below we will be having a confined uh, aquifer so as you can see that in the case of unconfined aquifer at the top we don't have an impermeable strata or aquifer and below we will be having but top we don't have so similar thing is written here that here the water table is not bound by any impermeable material above it below the, that will be bound but above it it will not be bound then the third type of aquifer is perch aquifer or intermediate type of aquifer so during downward movement of water sometime water traps over a local impermeable layer or clay local low sorry local impermeable layer of clay and forms a perch aquifer these aquifer are not long lasting so as you can see in the picture that in case of perch aquifer in case of perch aquifer you can see that we have a perch water table and as shown in the pocket that is perch aquifer we have a clay lens in the water table and below we have a unconfined aquifer mainly then we have a confined aquifer and it's like a pocket it's like a pocket of water which is trapped that is called perch aquifer or intermediate aquifer a water table well is drilled into the saturated zone if an aquifer well has water at atmospheric pressure at the level of water table but water in a confined aquifer can be under more pressure than atmospheric pressure that's why if a well is drilled into confined aquifer the water will naturally rise because of pressure over the surface of confined aquifer such a well will be called as artesian well so such sort of well is called artesian well which we have shown in these all pictures that what is artesian well right so artesian well is there in case of confined aquifer uh, sorry in case of confined aquifer we have shown the artesian well where it is then we have a surface which is called as piezometric surface what does it mean piezometric surface so it is a line drawn at the level to which water rises in artesian well is called piezometric surface means it is a straight line which is drawn at a level to which the water rises in artesian well means wherever the water will be rising straight line drawn to that thing is called as piezometric surface and this piezometric surface is shown in the case of confined aquifer you can have a look in the diagram if the ground surface lies lower than the piezometric surface assume that the ground surface is lying